All right. All right. So uh, today we only have one chapter. It's chapter 33. Um, in, interestingly, there's not a lot of um, common misconceptions for this chapter that I could think of, um, but there is a lot of information. What I want to emphasize for you is that some of this, so with the animals, uh, a lot of times students come to this part of the semester thinking that you have this base knowledge and so you don't have to study as hard or you don't have to um, read the textbook as much or and the kind of weirdness of the background is kind of bothering me for right now so i am going to remove the background um, it's making my me look like i have a halo because oh and now i know why because there's curtains in the back okay so we're gonna just have no background um so, but what I want um, to say is that uh, put the same level of effort into this as you have the other material, which seemed um, kind of more challenging or you were less familiar with. Um, and you'll find that, that you will get a deeper understanding of the material. So for these chapters, yes, this is, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, uh, so we're, the protostomes were, were, I'm sure you've heard of earthworms before, right? But what we're asking is we're trying to layer on the information. So we're trying to take what your, your current base knowledge is, and we're trying to add additional layers of information to that. So it's not like we don't think you know what an earthworm is, but what we're doing is we're trying to add the taxonomic layers to that and add some of the individual details about their internal anatomy. And for this, what this will end up doing is allow you to make connections between the different animal groups so that you have an un have a this understanding of the evolutionary patterns and what the different derived characters are, um, how we can differentiate those organisms, even if we were like, even if we were given some imaginary organism, if we were to do a dissection of it, based on certain characteristics that we noted in that organism, we would be able to classify it into a different group based on the characteristics that it shared with other organisms that we are familiar with. And so those are things that scientists do. Other things, if you are more interested in like the, you know, pre-health aspect, then what, uh, pay attention and, and what things you can find interesting in are, um, the anatomical features that the organism has and how that might differ from the humans that we'll look at. So these organisms, some of them have a circulatory system. Some of them have different types of digestive systems. But without these kind of earlier ancestral organisms, these are kind of like the basis of how the human system came into existence. So that you can make those types of connections too. And then I've also tried to include some examples that have uh, human health implications for you. So one of the groups that is being introduced is the nematodes. And most people will go through their entire life and, you know, they never are going to think about a roundworm um, unless they have to. Um, but anybody that is um, interested in veterinary medicine or even human health in terms of um, dealing with younger children, roundworm infections are pretty common. So uh, there, there are interesting aspects for all of these organisms. So kind of try to find what it is that sparks the interest for you in trying to um, become interested in those uh, different topics. So just try to add the layers of information to what you're already familiar with. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen with you and we will look at Blackboard. Uh, so we've completed Tuesday. Um, so now we're in Thursday. Our chapter is 33, the protostomes. Um, and I'm going to click in here because I want you to kind of notice it. Holy smokes, that looks. Oh, all right. So my internet is very slow. I'm on campus. <laughs> I'm not wired right now. I'm on the wireless. And I, you might have gotten the email that they changed the, um, the Wi Fi networks. Um, and so this, my computer is adjusting to the Wi-Fi networks and it's not as fast as it was last week. All right, so I wanted to show you this just so that you could see it looks a little bit different. Um, instead, I've tried to embed 
the different video lectures into Blackboard. And I'm going to explain why I did that in just a second. Um, so all of the video lectures are here for you, and as well as some additional videos, which I found um, that I think are interesting or that I showed in the video lectures. And you might not hear the um, the audio very well. Um, and you'll notice there's a lot of video lectures. Um, so why did I do this? Um, one of the reasons is that I actually do check um, kind of every week to see if you are looking at the lectures and how much time you're spending in Blackboard to kind of assess um, your, your interaction points, just to make sure that you're, you know, involved in the class. I see you join Zoom and that's fantastic, but I also want to see if there's kind of a correlation between your performance on the exams and how much time you are spending in the class. And what I found is overall, the, you're, as a class, you, you are spending a lot of time in Blackboard looking at things. Um, but the way that I had originally loaded the VidGrid videos onto Blackboard made it hard for me to see um, a lot of the the people logging in show up as anonymous rather than actually having your name associated with it. And so I'm going to stop sharing this and show you an example. Um, just so you could see what I have seen. Hold on. Share screen. All right. And I've, this is actually an example. This is a, just a, a picture that I downloaded. Um, from VidGrid, and um, this is not even from your class, but I did um, X out the name so you couldn't see any identifying information. But what VidGrid allows me to do is actually see a list of the names. So it'll show me if you logged in via Blackboard, it'll actually show your name um, and your email address. But what it shows me, and this is one I picked in particular because I think it, it, it provides some you know, in useful information. Um, it shows me if you see, watch the whole video or, and actually I think these two top ones were me. Sometimes I go in and watch my videos to like see if I explain things the right way. And so you can see in this top one um, and this, the top two ones, um, like either me or a student jumped from different parts of the lecture just to like see if there's, you know, what is, do I even want to watch this? Is this boring? Um, and I can even see if you've logged in multiple times. So you, you go in, you log in, you watch 25% of it, and then you come back later, you watch 25%. So overall, I get, kind of get to see like, you know, your interaction with it. Um, and it's, it's these ones at the top. And like I said, I think those were me watching them. Um, but I do see that with the students too. Those are the ones that I am like kind of see as red flags. And I didn't know if you were aware that I could see that. So I wanted you to just to, to know about that. Um, like I honestly am not hurt. My feelings are not hurt if you don't want to watch me. Um, but what I at least recommend is listening to it. Um, so um, just put it on in the background, take notes if you don't want to listen to it. Some, um, another faculty member was, um, had mentioned that she had students that um, actually preferred some of her lectures when she made podcasts of them. That's not something I'd ever um, thought of doing because I have never made a podcast. Um, but you can actually think of these, um, like if, if you didn't want to, you know, see the whole thing, um, then, you know, you can put it on in the background and listen to it. But it, the, the background information is, it's helpful information for you. So just wanted you to know that, that, that I actually have this ability to see all of your performance. And I'm not, oh, as a whole, the class is, you're, you're logging in a ton, you're watching things entirely, but there are a couple of um, times where I've seen like the checking in periodically. Um, and I just wanted you to be aware that I could see that um, type of information. If you wanted to watch the entire video, um, then I would suggest doing that. Um, and that brings me into the, I wanted to show you our exam three results. Then I want to make sure I, I'm not seeing. Hold on. Close it. Do this. No. It is not showing that as an option. Hold on, let me see. Exam reports. Okay. So 
sorry, Zoom isn't giving me the option of sharing that file. Oh, now it is available. Okay, so uh, this is, all right, this one was exam two. This is exam three. So overall, your average was um, is still pr pretty high. The average was at around an 87%. Um, and your distribution of grades was pretty similar to what we saw for exam two um, with uh, like 11 A's, six B's. Um, so the majority of the class was um, doing well, no F's, fantastic. Um, and this shows you kind of your grade distribution. So if you look, the gray is exam three and the performance is very similar to what exam two was. So um, it seems that exam one was uh, harder than the first one, probably because we had math and Hardy Weinberg on that. Um, but I, I intentionally put some difficult questions on this and you did overall really well um, on, the, on the exam. So um, these are just as an aside, these are higher um, grades, probably by about 10% than when I do this in person. Um, so I'm, it really, I think partly probably the, the study got, sheets that you get to use are, are definitely helpful. Um, but also I can definitely see the investment and time that you're putting into the class. So that is really um, helpful as well. So uh, like I said earlier, with chapter three, I don't see a lot of misconceptions um, in terms of uh, information that I wanted to bring up with you guys to remind you of. Um, let me just look at some notes. Um, yeah, I'd really, there's, I think all of it is really highlighted within the video lectures um, I highlighted the nematodes, which don't often get a lot of attention, but are actually very important. Um, and the text, yeah. So uh, I mentioned all the things that I had hoped to discuss. Uh, so if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Um, but otherwise, that is all I had for today. Uh, I will be back on Tuesday. Um, be back on Tuesday. And... We'll have our next exam that day, um, and it will be on your fungi, animal diversity, and your protostomes. So these kind of introductory, um, uh, kind of less complex multicellular organisms. And then next week, we will be talking about your uh, vertebrate groups um, and your deuterostomes. So we'll get to talk a little bit about some more sophisticated um, levels of, of organization. All right. Well, it was really good seeing all of you. Um, and I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, send me an email if anything's going up. I, uh, I tried to respond to um, individual emails that I think most things are covered. Um, but like I've said before, if, um, if you know, you have some internet outage or some sort of issue, just let me know and we'll try to work things out. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. Have a great day. Thank you. you too. Uh, I just have a quick question. Sure. So is next week our last week in new material? No, there's also new material the last week, week six. Um, and so week six, there there is no exam on that Tuesday. The exam will be on Thursday instead. And that's so, our last exam? Yes, we'll be on the last day of class. Okay, thank and you. You're welcome. Oh, I have a question. Sure. It was for the project. Yeah. Um, so I thought about doing like the oil spills. Okay the ocean is that a good topic to do for like a brochure or so i would you have to focus on an organism okay. so um if you did like the effect on um gosh like a, like seabirds um mm -hmm. and then how the oil affects those organisms like the population of seabirds the um 
the individual organism in terms that the oil coats the, the wings and the feathers so they can't fly. And then if you did it at an, like an, an organ level, like what is the, uh, does it, I, and I don't really know what the answer is, but if it causes like cancer for those organisms, if we see then like on, or tumors, then that would be like an organ level. Okay. So as long as there's like, you hit three different, so I would pick an animal. Affects greatly. Say that again? So to just basically pick a specific organism that it would affect greatly. Yes, that's what, that's what I would focus on. Um, you could even do like a community level, like the oil affects like the, a community of, of fish. Um, and it affects the, this species of fish in this way, and it affects the organs in this way. So as long as you're just hitting three different levels, Mm -hmm. um or like i can do like plastics yes and and that that works too because um we're seeing um that they're they choke organisms we find large amounts of plastics in the stomachs mm -hmm. um so you have that organ you have the organism and then you have the population okay right okay perfect right. great well thank yep. you so much you are welcome i'm glad, glad you're back in the office Nice to, yeah. And I got to take my mask off because I'm the only one in here. <laughs> that was good. That's nice. oh. You get freedom from the kids. <laughs> yes, it is. There is that too. Yes. <laughs> you know, you know what that's like. <laughs> yeah, all the kids are locked right now in the room like that. I'm like, go in there, get your iPad, yeah. leave me alone. That's what that's what we do too. That's what we do too. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I had door locks on certain rooms because I'm like, how do I oh, hide? I, right. No, they can be locked and they still get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, they're sneaky. It's pointless. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But yeah. Well, thank you so much. You were welcome. Any questions, and I'll email you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. All Bye. right. Bye.